In Zimbabwe, it appears candidates for main opposition citizens' coalition for change, also known as Triple C, have again been denied the opportunity to compete in the February 3rd by elections. This after a high court judge upheld another motion by Singezo Shabangu to remove all CCC members of parliament and uh, councillors from the February 3rd ballot because they had ceased to be members of the coalition. Tendai Rubin Bofana is a Zimbabwe social justice advocate and writer. He tells me the leadership of the CCC is to blame for the disarray in the party. The state of the Triple C, the Citizens' Coalition for Change, is pathetic to say the least. They're in sixes and sevens. There's so much disarray and disorganization. At the moment, it's very hard to tell what is going on. As you rightly said, with all these recalls that we have been seeing from last year being instituted by these sevens or uh, Shabangu, who claims to be their, their interim secretary general, we have seen that uh, a lot of Members of parliament have been recalled. We already had the by-election last year, or 9 December, and we're scheduled to have another by-election for MPs, uh, members of parliament, early February this year. And he is already threatening to recall more members of parliament and councillors. And also, what is even more confusing is that those recalled members of parliament from the Triple C are running in these by-elections under the same banner of the Triple C, which they know is going to be a problem. We've already seen that last uh, year in the December 9th uh, by-elections, where the court at the last minute barred them from participating. And yet they are repeating the same mistake. Why are they not, for instance, standing as independents so that they can have that, that independence in the, with, when they are in parliament where they will not be able to be recalled by anyone? So what can you tell us about this suggestion by the uh, spokesperson for President Nagagwa, Mr. Charamba, suggesting that uh, perhaps the president should take over the opposition party because of the problems it has? Is this possible legally? When it comes to the presidential spokesman, George Charamba, that guy is just excitable. What I said about the Triple C becoming a circus, I can actually say the country itself is a circus, and it has been a circus for a long time. We do not have people who are serious anymore. So if you go through the Twitter posts or X posts that are written by someone who's supposed to be the presidential spokesperson. We have seen presidential spokesperson. We have seen in the United States, you know, the White House spokesperson and so forth. They are very serious. But in Zimbabwe, the guy just posts whatever rubbish he wants. He can insult people. He can threaten people. Now for him to suggest that the president of another political party, Munagagwa is the president of ZANU-PF, the ruling party, can take over an opposition party. That is a bit crazy. But maybe, maybe it's not that crazy. Why do I say so? As I said in my previous statement, what is really going on in the Triple C? Who is really behind these recalls? You know, who's behind Shabangu? Who is even behind Chamisa? Why is Chamisa not standing up against these recalls? Instead of just posting biblical verses on X, formerly Twitter, why isn't he taking any action? Why is he not doing something that people can say, okay, the guy is trying his best, but maybe he's facing a formidable onslaught, but he's doing nothing. Tendai Rumi Bufana is a Zimbabwe social justice advocate and writer. He was speaking with us from the capital, Horare. Malawi and Tanzania have left a ban. The two countries imposed last month on importing each other's crops. Malawi had banned on milled maize from Tanzania to avoid maize disease. Tanzania banned Malawi's soybean over disease and on maize seed, saying it contained genetically modified organisms. However, green traders say the suspension of the ban has come after they lost their, their business. Lamek Masina reports from Blantyre. Malawi's Minister of Agriculture says in a statement, that it has lifted the ban this after Tanzanian authorities announced that the maize lethal necrosis disease has been contained. It says traders can now freely import maize from Tanzania as long as they present necessary authorization and documentation from the government of Tanzania 
and Malawi. Tanzania has also responded by lifting its ban on imports of soybeans and maize seed from Malawi. Tanzania's Agriculture Minister Hussein Bashe told local media in Tanzania that they have lifted the ban following diplomatic discussions between the two countries. Grace Mijiga Muhango is the president of the Grain Traders Association of Malawi. She welcomes the lifting of the ban but says it has come too late. A lot of people have lost business because if you look at the uh, soya market, which was mostly just transiting in Tanzania into China, you can't uh, go back and start renegotiate contractual obligation with uh, either the buyer or the supplier. This month, the maize import ban forced the World Food Programme to start milling 30,000 metric tons of relief maize to Malawi, it imported from Tanzania after the grain was held up by authorities in Arusha. Ronald Chirumba is an expert in crop protection in Malawi. He says although Tanzania has announced that the disease is now contained, it still remains a threat to Malawi. We cannot stop this disease 100%. We can just put controls make sure that um, probably uh, this disease can be delayed uh, coming into the country. Um, chances are very high that it will still come. That's, that's my opinion. However, Malawi's Minister of Agriculture says it will be in touch with the Tanzanian authorities and will update the public on the changes that may arise if maize disease is detected. The ban came at a time when nearly a quarter of Malawi's population was facing food shortages. Political analyst Sheriff Kaisi has advised the two countries to stop exercising what he called a trade war on food. Soya and the maize is a food for you know um, citizens, so you, you don't need to play with uh, people's lives. If it is politics, it has really gone very long and they um, out out of hand. Kaisi says Malawi authorities should work to ensure that such a scenario does not happen again. The Spanish Supreme Court ruled Monday that a 2021 mass deportation of minors from the Spanish enclave of Ceta to Morocco was illegal. Hundreds of unaccompanied minors were part of a group of around 12,000 people who tried to enter Ceta from Morocco in May 2021 by scaling a border fence of swimming around it. The mass border crossing took place amid a diplomatic dispute between Madrid and Labat regarding Western Sahara. After the border crossing, approximately 700 minors were deported to Morocco, despite Spanish law that requires the movement to take administrative steps for each minor it deports, including collective information on their circumstances and holding a hearing it deemed necessary. Government lawyers cited a 2007 agreement between Spain and Morocco outlining the process for assisted returns to Morocco in the case of exceptional circumstances, but the Supreme Court dismissed this defense, ruling that it did not supersede Spanish law. The court ruled that the deportation violated the physical and moral integrity of the migrants and breached the European Human Rights Convention. It cited Article 4 of Protocol No. 4 of the European European Human Rights Convention, which says that the collective expulsion of aliens is prohibited. The Spanish Interior Ministry had defended the 2021 deportation of youth and has denied that it breached international law. Many of those who crossed the border in 2021 were believed to be sub-Saharan migrants who sought to find a better life in Europe. Tens of thousands of migrants from sub-Saharan Africa make the trip from northwest Africa to Spain each year. More than 6,600 migrants died while trying to reach Spain by boat last year from West Africa, according to the Spanish group Caminado in Hotelers, which works to defend the rights of migrants.